Good morning, folks. Been a while since we got some more Starwater news. This time, it falls from Saturn's rings, with a confirmed electromagnetic connection between their descent from the rings to the higher latitude rain zones we might not expect to see. Downgrade fest last night at the USGS. Every agency on Earth rang it up as a 6.1 out of the Philippines, but the USGS is downgraded to 5.8. Also had a mid 5 pointer in Honduras. Two buoys in event mode. One off the Jersey coastline is likely just some moderate rogue waves as the deviation is minor. But in Alaska, very doubtful this is accurate. A 120 foot swing in the sea level is the kind of thing nearby ships and coastlines tend to notice. This buoy has been doing this for weeks. Imelda on the left, Victoria on the right. Imelda is the most powerful storm on the planet right now and the islands east of Madagascar are probably not happy. Victoria will get some rain to southwest Australia tonight and tomorrow, but the big storming is still in the northeast. Southern New Zealand about to get another Antarctic chill. Europe has a few lows and a few more weather alarms, but not on this map is former Soviet Georgia, taking the worst of it with 8 to 10 centimeters of hail in about 25 minutes that destroyed nearly every local crop and damaged almost every building structure. In the U.S., two all-time snow records set by the current storm. If you come look at the past week, month, the records have been in precipitation and cold, and yes, that factors in the winter season. U.S. Watch Zone did not disappoint last night. Tornadoes dropped, semis overturned, buildings damaged, significant hail, flash flooding, widespread lightning. And that's all before I went to sleep. This is Strike Star, by the way, and it's awesome. The affected area is enormous and will only grow this evening as the powerful low, counterclockwise forcing divided at the blue line creates the opposing air mass convergence. The meeting of different moisture, temperature, and electric potential is what causes the clouds to explode out along the leading edge and the reason it always follows that convergence. The severe weather and flooding risks are pretty much coast to coast today as we do have that next rain and snowmaker headed to the Rockies. If you see color where you live, you got a weather watch. Now this is minor radio signal degradation in the D region of the ionosphere as energy began cooking our upper atmosphere from this the first major flare facing Earth in a very long time. An M6.5 solar flare ripped out of the active region we were most concerned with yesterday as the first and best reversed polarity candidate of the cycle. I believe it should be obvious that a CME was produced in Earth's direction, but let's do this by the book. Soho Lasco C2 is updated, filming from Earth, ejecta visible in all directions leaving the sun. We call it a halo eruption and it's a good sign that a blast is headed our way. You must also use the stereo spacecraft A and B. You can see that as B looks at the sun, the Earth would be off to the right. In that frame, we see plasma coming in Earth's direction. Earth is off to the left in the other image from stereo A. Dead, certain impact. And those spirals not yet updated. Well, let's come look at the sunspots starting in the bottom left. These sunspots grew up before our eyes and are starting to mix charges out front. Top right, we have a traditional spreading region, but thick dense and magnetically mixing in the middle. Lastly, our M flare maker, decaying a bit after the blast but still showing that reverse leading blue polarity when it should be red negative. Still waiting for the speediest solar wind stream particles. Keep an eye as the yellow speed rises today. We absolutely have another, this CME, on its way to Earth. Check the endless spirals and the CME arrival prediction time on ISWA when they update. Last two days of the uptick watch, eyes open. No fear, it's 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.